Thanks for joining everybody. We are gonna dive into a little journey that I put together for us. The Strengths Finder system is, I like to compare it to a language. And as we all know, you can't really learn a language in 45 minutes. But what I've done here is I've put together a little experience where I'm gonna share a crisis and journey that I went through and then how this system was able to help me navigate it and then we're going to dive into some details that's going to help you pick and choose some pieces that can ultimately add value to your life and help you start navigating all the things that we're going through so we can build a foundation of wellness together. So if any questions come up, throw them in the chat. And from there, we're going to address them in the end if there are any questions. And that way we can kind of flow through and make sure to address everything in the presentation as well. So my company name is Keon Harmony, it's a play on my name clearly. And it's, we basically search for keys to harmony of body, mind and spirit. So it really ties well to what we're gonna talk about, obviously. <laughs> so before we get started, what I wanna do is just take a breath. So this actually is one of the first things that I do every day to help me not only in times of peace, but also in times of chaos, to be able to just anytime I need to get clear about something or get grounded, it really helps a lot. So I'm going to start out with a little tip. So I want you to, for just two minutes, just do this little exercise with me, okay? So close your eyes and take a deep breath, at least four seconds. One, two, three, four. And then slowly exhale. One, two, three, four. And by doing this little breathing technique, you're physically sending responses and signals to your body to say, hey, we're at peace, we're okay. You can, here's the rest of your you know, brain function and emotional control and all of that stuff so that you can actually navigate that next thing you're doing really well. So. For two minutes, continue the slow breathing, and I'm going to walk you through a little experience that I do that helps me out a lot. So close your eyes, deep breath, and imagine a golden egg or a golden ball in front of you. It's going to be bigger than you are, but not too much bigger. Now take a deep breath and step inside this golden egg. And this egg now represents your own personal space. And what that means is that anything that ultimately serves you can come inside the egg, be it love or good vibes or whatever it needs to be. And whatever doesn't serve you, the shape of this egg or this ball is going to help bounce off whatever chaotic, angry, fearful thing that is coming towards you, whether it's through the news or the media or whatever it is. And you just take a deep breath and you let it go. And as you're going through your day, you just remember that, hey, if something's happening and you need that, you're inside this egg, you're inside this ball. And coming back to that, if I'm talking to somebody that's just really anxious, it helps me not getting just as anxious as they are. So I hope you use that and that it helps you out. And if you have any questions, you know, just feel free to ask me about it later. So the story I wanna share with you today starts about 25 years ago when my parents, my mom and my dad, started their business with a company called USANA. And they built this business over the course of 20 years together. And with my dad being the kind of the front and center, the systems guy, the presenter, the speaker, the coach, all that stuff. And my mom being his wonderful support. And over the course of those 20 years, I got to experience what having a business did for you and the challenges that came across and how you had to grow with that business. And so as I saw my parents grow, I saw their business grow and really took on, took this to heart. And about early 2014, my dad got a little bit of a infection, goes to the hospital to get some antibiotics, 
we think nothing of it. But over the course of about eight months, he's going in and out of the hospital because these antibiotics ended up being really strong. They forced him to take it for six weeks and that caused necrosis of the liver. Now we didn't know it caused that, but it ended up being the case and it was really devastating to his system. And so over the course of eight months of in and out of the hospital, it was just, you know, so much uncertainty. What's going on? What's happening? You're going to be okay, but let's figure this out. And because he had just run, ran a triathlon the year before, it really didn't seem like it was going to be that big of a deal, but you know, that we were there, I went to the hospital a few times to see him and around December, we get a call that we have to go to Mexico to see him and that things aren't looking good. And on the way, my uncle told me that he didn't make it. He had a heart attack and he passed away. And it was like train hit me in the face. And it was crazy how, you know, having to navigate what's the emotional response i'm driving i can't just freak out right now and and i shifted very quickly into just talking to my uncle about things that were within my control about life and the meaning of it all and all these kinds of things and after we took care of all of that here we have this business that's been going for 20 years and my mom who was a support but not running it and me who had some experience, but had to step into this role and be the, you know, the man of the house and support this family and all this stuff. And not only that, they were in San Diego, I was in Orange County. So having to do it from afar. So it was kind of a crisis of personality, of life, of all kinds of things, you know, losing a parent. And Fortunately, I had, you know, a lot of different things that had taught me about philosophy and life and managing stress and productivity and all kinds of tools that I was able to reach into in my tool belt to try to navigate what was going on. But we were hitting problems and challenges left and right. And about a year into our struggle, fortunately, the business was set up in a way where even though we were hitting our heads against the walls left and right, it was set up in a way where it was still going, it was still producing money and we didn't have to you know, lose the house and all this stuff. But we definitely wanted to figure out a way to make this easier for ourselves with my mom and our brothers handling this business. And we had heard a friend say, hey, you should do this strengths finder thing. It's, it's gonna help you to talk about your strengths and understand blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh yeah, that sounds great, but we're in the middle of a crisis here. I don't know if you can tell, but we'll, we'll definitely get to that. And eight months later, we're at this event, this giant you know, business event at a convention in Utah. And there's 10,000 people in this stadium. And I just go for a quick bathroom break and happen to come across the husband of the person that was doing that strengths coaching. And I was like, okay, I get it. Like, we're going to do this. So I flag him down because guys are not supposed to talk in the bathrooms, flag him down. And we're talking about, okay, like we got to do this thing. You know, your, your wife, Dara said she would be able to help out and we're connecting after this thing. We take the assessment, the strengths finder assessment by Gallup and Long story short, I'm just enthralled. Within the first hour, I'm amazed at how these insights into how we were wired were so personal to us and was able to impact us and help us understand where we were struggling, why, you know, when crisis hit and emotions took over and we had the challenges we had, why those were showing up based on how we were wired. And it wasn't this personality test because personality comes from the word persona, which is a mask. And so people can take on and off masks, but this went much deeper into how was your brain wired to actually view the world, to make decisions, to communicate and all these things. So when Gallup and this strengths finder came into the play, all of a sudden it was a very different experience with this stuff. <clears throat> so it went much deeper than personality. And after you do the assessment, you find out that one in 33 million people have the same top five strengths as you. And that was so much more specific than anything that I had learned. And they had pulled this system together. Over 2 million successful people were studied over decades to see what is it that makes them successful. 
So it was a whole new way of seeing the world and being able to navigate a crisis best. And it was this idea of a strengths-based approach. And this cultural shift is very different from what we were growing up around where, you know, in school, it's like if you have five A's and one B or C, every, all the attention goes on that failure, on that weakness. You got to get that up and forget those strengths. But once you go into the real world, ideally you're actually shifting into focusing on strengths because that's where you're going to be best. But we end up defaulting to where are my weaknesses? How do I negate those or turn them into strengths? But the problem is that weaknesses can't be turned into strengths. They can only be neutralized. And we see this in a high school math class where you have a student that is barely trying, just shows up and sets the curve, gets the highest grade in the class and pisses off half the people. And then you have the other student that is struggling and really wants to get a good grade, but they're barely passing with a C after all this effort and tutoring and time. And so it gives this very clear understanding of the person with the strength effortlessly got the A, you know, with a fraction of the effort got the A because they were wired to understand numbers better. The person with the C just this wasn't wired to understand numbers. They got to a point where they got a C, but they only neutralized that weakness. They didn't actually turn it into the A and setting the curve in the future. That didn't really happen. Another cultural shift that was important to understand is that like our strengths don't change as we get older. Our wiring doesn't change as we get older. We become more of who we already are. So by understanding this, we're able to better leverage it and use it in our life. And you got to remember those 2 million plus people, when they studied them, they realized that, oh, these aren't well-rounded individuals that are doing every single thing. They actually understood where their strengths were. They focused in on those areas and they were sharp. They were incredible at those areas. And that's when that person, their successes, their businesses skyrocketed. One other thing to keep in mind is that this actually affects common sense too. Certain things are going to be cultural that everybody kind of agrees on, but when it comes to common sense not being common, it's because the way you view the world and the way things are common sense for you is based on how you're wired to view the world. So something that seems common sense for you isn't something that other people are going to see as easily. So if you're kind of not aligning on the same page with somebody, it's probably because of this. So try not to be as frustrated the next time that comes up. So yeah, not everybody's wired to see the same things. So your strengths are, I want you to think of it like a recipe. So you can have the same five ingredients, but then the chef makes a big difference, right? But each ingredient creates a unique combination together. And then all those five ingredients create a unique combination of who you are. So understanding that and working with those ingredients and understanding how they'll play well together is a really powerful way for you to start navigating your life day to day. So to help illustrate this, there was a reading study done by Gallup where they had a group of people and they gave them a reading test and then they got a baseline of, are you an average or above average reader? And then they gave them the same class, the same time to go over this class and then retested them after. So the average readers had 90 words per minute. The above average readers scored at 300 words per minute. And keep in mind, they don't know how amazing or average they are. They're just tested in the beginning and then they tested them at the end. Now, the average readers didn't have a natural strength while the above average readers did. And clearly there's a huge gap in where they're starting. The average readers jumped from 90 words per minute to 150 words per minute after all this effort and all this study. Now, what do you think the above average readers were able to do? They already started pretty high from 300 words per minute, they take the same test, the same assessment, the same time practicing, and then they study again, and they take the retest again. The above average readers scored 2,900 words per minute. 
That's insane. T almost 10 times more with the same amount of effort, same amount of time, but 10x the results. So that's clearly illustrated to us that we really want to, if we're going to invest one hour of our time, we want to invest in a place that gets us 10 times the return, right? So understand this simple formula, talent times your investment of time equals a strength and competence. So you can cultivate these skills and the, based on a predisposition or a talent that you have, you can go much farther with the same amount of time invested. So the strength theme is an indication of an area of talent. So once you understand that and invest there, you're gonna have more fun doing it. It's gonna be life giving for you instead of life taking for you because it's a strength. You naturally are wired to do it that way and you enjoy it. And you're gonna get 10 times the result as well with a fraction of the effort. That's huge, huge difference. So. In a crisis, we need 10 times the results in whatever we're doing, 10 times the results in helping people in handling our emotions and communicating to other people and coming together and figuring out what the next steps got to be to protect each other and go stronger than ever, you know? So how do we take advantage of this today? This was really important to me to help you out because while we're learning a language, I still want you to take away something you can use much faster. Now the StrengthsFinder system has 34 possible strengths. And if you take the assessment, you can see your top five. It's a $19 assessment. I don't recommend doing anything else. Just start with that simple one. But every strength falls into one of four categories. They call the strengths domains. And it's these four categories that we can focus on because without doing the assessment, you can kind of see, oh, I, I do fall into that more so than another one. And you're able to say, okay, let me jump on this and use that in my, you know, starting tomorrow or today. So the four domains are the executing strength the domain, the influencing domain, relationship building domain, and the strategic thinking domain. So all 34 strengths themes fall into these four domains. And basically what these, th these themes are, these domains are, you have people with the executing themes, they just know how to make things happen. They're the ones that make the task list and they check it off and they're pumped and they're producing and they're creating amazing momentum and results. They're the people who may also, even if the day is done, they'll write down the task and then check it off just to feel good at the end of the day. Now under, you can see a list of some of the strengths that fall into this category. So when you've done the assessment, you can see, oh, how many of my strengths fall into perhaps the executing theme, the domain, and then you can from there say, okay, well, that piece of advice would work for me well. The influencing theme, these are people that know how to take charge, to speak up, to make sure the team is heard. They're the ones that love communicating good news, that love learning things and helping people out. And it's really powerful strength to have. It's one of the least common, which is interesting to know. So understanding that this is yours will be helpful as well. And you can see below, activator, command, maximizer. These are some of the strengths, themes that fall into this category. The next one is the relationship building domain. And these are the people that they have this ability to build strong relationships that hold a team together, make a team greater than the sum of its parts. And a really cool way to explain it is they're like the glue and the grease of the team. The glue keeps the team together the grease helps the team kind of navigate the, the friction, the difficult situations and get through those times stronger than before. There's one strength in here called harmony. Now, if you have the harmony strength, you're the type of person that is really uncomfortable if there's tension or challenges in, in the relationships in the space. You want there to be harmony in the room. So if people are upset and frustrated at each other, you are uncomfortable until you can help address that. And what's beautiful is that your ability is that you're naturally wired to see, oh, this person needs this, that person needs that. Let me help facilitate so that there's harmony again. So if, there, if this person worked at the UN, that'd be an amazing job for them because they're able to more clearly and effortlessly see the path towards agreement and harmony. 
But strategic thinking strength, these are the types of people that they help consider what could be and they absorb and analyze information better. And that can help with decision making and that kind of thing. So when you have this type of strength, your thinking ability is really powerful. It can actually, you have in some strengths creative capability and in other strengths, critical thinking strength and capability. So depending on the strength, you might have ideas that you come up with all the time. So in meetings where you can create ideas, you're an amazing person to have there because it's effortless for you to come up with ideas. For the critical thinking, you're the analyzer. You're able to go really deep, to be patient with the information, to crunch the numbers. And the people that want to execute, for example, they want to move quickly on something, they might not be patient enough to allow the strategic, the strategic thinker to want to be able to spend time and think about something before they make a decision. So there can be clashes that come up if the executing type of strengths person wants to get something done and they're pushing the strategic thinking type of person that wants to think about stuff more and before they take action. And so they'll call each other slow or too fast or you don't think before you act or, and they'll basically be judging each other's weaknesses, but really these weaknesses are actually overpowered strengths that they're calling out. So this is a really important thing to keep in mind that as part of this culture and the system, you don't have to worry about having weaknesses that you'll never be able to overcome. Oftentimes, it's a strength overpowered that creates the perception of a weakness. So being able to understand it and it helps you navigate it much better. So this is the four domains. If you Google strengths finder domains, you can find this, this little illustration. So don't worry about that. But once you take the assessment, you'll know which of your themes fall into which domain. So that's really nice insight there. So top considerations, each domain is gonna have its own nuances for navigating crisis. That's really important to understand. So you're able to now scientifically say, hey, honey or spouse or brother or coworker or whoever, based on scientific backing, I need time to think. Or based on scientific backing, I need time to go work on this thing or whatever. So each one is gonna be unique and being able to communicate that is gonna be really helpful. So you wanna be able to understand what are yours and then what are the other people so you can get support from them for how you need to process emotions and what you're gonna do in the crisis and how you're gonna overcome it. And then you're gonna give support where they need it most so that they can do the same. And then together as a team, you're able to overcome it. Now you wanna keep in mind that what's life giving for you, remember the execution person, it's life giving for them to act, to take action, to cross off a task. It may not be life giving for somebody else. And actually the thinker might get exhausted from thinking about a task list of things that they have to do if they ha haven't had a chance to actually think through things first, to process things first. So having that conversation, hey, I have this idea, this thing I wanna do, would you be up for doing that or does that sound exhausting to you right now? And if it's, it's okay, if it's exciting for you to do it, they should give you the space to do that. But you also should remember that, okay, I need to give them space and I got to go do my thing so we can move forward together. It can be confusing to consider what you enjoy so much isn't the case for others. So keep that in mind as you proceed. So ultimately, creating a safe space to discuss this, to explore and support each other allows us to be our best for each other and to get through any crisis stronger than ever. So. Now we're going to go through some examples of each of these uh, domains, and then you're going to be able to pick one or two that resonates with you. So just jot this down and you're able to use this starting from the end of this discussion. So keep an eye out. Now keep in mind, not everybody is going to be just in one executing or one influence. It could be a mixture. So don't worry about only picking from one category. Just pick the two actions that sound like, oh my God, I need that. Just whatever one feels life-giving for you, pick that as your two. 
So one thing to keep in mind, do you usually take action first or do you think more? Do you move others into action? Do you inspire others with your you know, speeches and whatnot or your chats? Or are you, moving, are you moved by them? Are you the one that's like the support in the group or the relationship builder that is bringing harmony for everybody else? So for, if your strengths fall into a lot of the executing themes, you have a drive towards results, moving self into action, very powerful gift to have. So you may not be ready to talk about emotions with another person immediately. So keep that in mind. So if you feel like, oh yeah, like I don't want to talk about it immediately, this could be some, this could be a reason. So you want to move into action first, not into talking about your emotions first. So you want to be sure that you're saying, I need to process my own stress before I do anything else. And if people don't let you do that, it could cause you to lash out. So if you have lashed out in the past six months or you know, in the past three months or whatever it has been, then you can actually point to this and say, hey, like I just wanted to start. I didn't want to talk about my emotions. I'm understanding that this is, could be a point where the lashing out came from. It wasn't actually because of X, Y, Z, I didn't want to upset you. So it's going to be life giving for you to check off a task list. And so just let those around you know that your action is about you finding clarity. It's about you processing your emotions. So they can give you the space instead of judging you for not being somebody who's going to sit down and process your emotions and work with them or whatever, they give you the space to go and do something and process your emotions. And then later you can come in and say, okay, I'm a little more clear now. Let's talk about this. So the influencing domain expression is really critical for you. And this is how you can deal with stress. So you got to be careful not to overwhelm yourself by absorbing too much information for the sake of wanting to influence others, for the sake of wanting to express and influence other yeah. people. So you might, you might be processing too much information and then that's creating anxiety and overwhelm for you. So keep that in mind. So you want to find a healthy way to express yourself. Don't overwhelm yourself or others in the process of that. So it would be good for you to let others know how life-giving it is for you to share info and inspire each other, but let them know it's okay for them to communicate if it's too much. That way, if you're on your soapbox and super excited over your on so whatever, then they can say, okay, the two minutes were good, but I'm, I, that's enough for me. Like I need to go do something else now because it's just overwhelming hearing the rest of this. And maybe you find somebody that can hear your whole speech and be excited about it. So you kind of meet people where they're at and find somebody who works well with your strengths as well too. All right. So the next one is the relationship building domain. Being in the presence of important relationships is critical for you. So you, it's life giving for you to be around relationships that are meaningful. So this is really important for you to keep in mind. It's okay. You actually prefer to process emotions while you're talking with somebody. That relationship being there creates the sense of peace and warm fuzzies that says, hey, let's talk this out. And through that process of talking, you're able to actually figure out and spark and create clarity for yourself about your emotions, where they're coming from, what to do next, all kinds of things. So you want to be sure to bring relationship time into your weekly routine so that this energizing time is consistently present and helps you to recharge and be at your most resilient and best. Now for the other domains, doing those actions is going to help you to recharge and be at your most resilient and best as well, which is why picking one or two and starting it is such a powerful practice for a foundation of wellness for you. Now, the last one for the strategic thinkers, time and space to process is really, really critical. So you don't want to be in a situation where doing, 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 or learning a ton of, you know, information and people ex expressing themselves and blah, blah, blah. You want space by yourself to be with your thoughts, 
and to process all of this. And a nuance that's important here is that a lot of times the people with this type of domain, they feel uncomfortable with sharing an unfinished thought. So because of that, if you force this type of person or if you've been forced into a conversation too soon, it's felt really uncomfortable, it's felt exhausting, you may have lashed out and it caused problems. So being able to communicate with them say, hey, I really need to just spend 30 minutes by myself to process this. It, you avoid that situation that causes more anxiety and overwhelm and you're able to process the emotion and be able to get to a point where then you can actually come in and contribute in a very meaningful way. But you have to remember that they can't read your mind. You have to communicate that you're not able to process while you talk, which is the complete opposite of the relationship builder domain, where the people with those strengths pr actually process while they talk. So they can't imagine a world where you're not able to do the same thing. So by telling them, hey, I actually think I have more strategic thinking strengths and I really just, it's life giving for me to process alone and we can talk about this in 30 minutes, in two hours, tomorrow, next week, whatever a comfortable timeline is, you can agree upon with them and be able to come together in a way that then leverages your strength. You think about it and you share a very powerful, complete thought that is much more thorough than what you would have been able to produce if you had just had to do it in the moment. So asking for people to be patient and supporting you to allow space for processing before expecting your contribution. It's not that this type of domain is thinking too slow. This is not a weakness. You wanna give them a space to allow their strength to help them and then they can come in and help everybody else. We're going back to the couch now. <clears throat> so what are the top takeaway actions? What can I do to remain energized? Navigate processing the emotional and difficult times and come out stronger than ever. Which one or two actions or ideas can you talk to somebody about today and use immediately? And I just pick one or two and start. And you wanna be careful not to enlist others into tasks just because it makes you feel good because what may you feel good might be exhausting for somebody else suggest it but if they say it doesn't sound like it's it's for me say great i'll be back we'll meet up again later and especially right now it's going to be really important to check in and confirm with yourself will this action be nour nourishing for me or is it going to be depleting and over the next six months to a year, and even I recommend further than that, check in with yourself and say, hey, how many things that I do that was nourishing? How many things that I do that was depleting? And these are little signals of things that align or don't align with your strengths. <clears throat> you got to feel that tropical breeze, you know, feel it, feel it. So <clears throat> there's a few key terms I want to clear up here skill, talent, strength, and domain. So a talent is a predisposition. You're naturally wired underneath in your, not in the code, but in like your source code, that you're able, you have this talent to do something really, really well. Now you invest time and over time that becomes a strength. And the domain houses a certain number of strengths that fall within that category. So there's four, domains for the 34 strengths. The strengths themes are a signal for possible areas of talent and you want to pick skills that align with that talent and nurture those, work on those. So in your career, in your school, in your life, if you've noticed areas where that skill was much easier for you to do, whether it was planning an event or communicating with somebody when they were sad, or getting in front of an audience and speaking with passion and excitement and moving a crowd, or creating a, a, a goal and then setting out and achieving and executing with amazement and getting everybody else on the team to adhere to a much more urgent schedule. So understanding that helps you invest in skills that are aligned with your talents and strengths, and you can get that 10x result like we've been talking about that 
we all really need in a time of crisis. So keep in mind too, that when you're navigating a crisis, there's a lot of emotion coming up. A lot of people are really frustrated and angry or scared or whatever. And this actually results in your strengths overpowering much faster, much more intensely. So it becomes even more important for us to say, okay, I need to actually go process over here, or I need to talk to this person in the process, or I need to go and do something in the process. And that can create this foundation where the wellness can build up and you can have a little bit more clarity and when you have clarity, I mean, you can do a lot more in terms of contrib contributing to getting through this crisis together. Now you wanna keep in mind, because you have five strengths and there's 34 of them, you're gonna be sharp as an individual, you invest in your strengths, and then as a team, you're well-rounded so that together you can go and tackle the world and the problems and, and we can get through this stronger than ever. Kian, that was a great presentation. And I learned about some of my strengths. Um, so I think we will go straight to Q&A. Uh, if there's any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A for our panelists. Oh, I do see one here. Um, and what I see is someone wants to know, okay, if, if there's a strength that I like better, can I eventually grow into that strength? <laughs> So how you're wired is not going to change, but if there's a strength that you envy in others, it's probably because it's more difficult for you to do. So mm -hmm. instead of investing time doing something that's difficult and painful for you, you can look at how can I leverage a strength to be able to deliver on what that other thing that you envy can deliver on. So there's different ways for a strategic thinker to communicate and build relationships. It's not that they can't, but they just have to approach it a little differently. And the good news is that ultimately you wanna focus on your area of strength and just build a team with somebody who has that strength and together you're gonna be amazing. So it's not taking away from you because that person that has the thing you envy, they have something, you have something that they envy. So you kind of balance each other out that way. Thank you for that. I see another question came up. Thank you, um, Jeff. It's great presentation. How can I follow your company? Do you have a website or a blog? I do. I actually stopped sharing before I switched over. Thank you for the question. So if we jump down to the next slide, here we go. So you can see I'm on, right now I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not posting too much because I'm getting really clear about processing all of this, but you can get in touch with me there. You can, you know, my website is right there. You can shoot me an email and we're gonna be ramping up, you know, as ideas and things come up to be able to help our community better. Okay. Got another question for you then. Um, can you share a little bit more about the balcony and basement of strength? What it might look like when a strength is overpowered? Mm, yeah, so this is one of the, my favorite things to talk about. We didn't have time to go into it in today's presentation, but the balcony and basement basically says that, okay, once you have your strengths, each strength has a balcony, which is the best of that strength, and each strength has a basement, which is the dark side. The way that if the strength is overpowered shows up as a weakness or a problem. So by understanding that the strength is kind of neutral, but at its best looks like this and at its darkest looks like this, you're able to understand and move from a raw state to a refined state where you can navigate it better and bring the best of that strength out and have people understand that, oh, the basement of the strength showed up. Let me help them navigate this. They're not trying to be a jerk. They're not trying to not listen. Their strength is just overpowered. They're emotional. Something triggered them. People are going to be much more passionate about things that they perceive and see and things that are common sense to them versus, you know, things that aren't. So this really helps with navigating that stuff. I love talking about it. It's so interesting. <laughs> very, that is very interesting. Um, and can you share more about the, where you take this test, I think is what it's saying. 
is the question. Yeah, so, so the Strengths Finder assessment, you can buy the book Strengths Finder 2.0, and there's a code in the back, and you can get book and take the assessment that way. Or if you look up Clifton Strengths Finder, I believe it's gallopsstrengthcenter.com, but just Google it, and I think it's easier to come up. And that way you take the $19 top five strengths, or you can email me at keon at keonharmony.com. And I'm happy to send the directions and, and help you take that. And then if you share your strengths with me, we can even potentially set up some time to chat about it later. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see which domain, Keon, do you lead with and what talent? Oh. What talent do you have and what talent do you envy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's so, a good question. <laughs> yeah. So I have a strength in the strategic thinking domain. I have two in the relationship building domain and I have two in the influencing domain and I have zero in the executing domain. So I've had to create, syst I've been really envious of the people that just get stuff done like it's nothing so I've had to build systems and processes that help me hold myself accountable to the execution type of stuff or get around people that poke you and prod you until you get it done <laughs> you know that's been helpful thank you to Elsa for being one of those prodders <laughs> and, <laughs> Believe it or not, we had a dry run and it was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I, I agree. When we, we could have recorded that one. <laughs> I like this one too. Though. I think it, we, you know, we picked up speed. It was nice. We did. We did. <laughs> I like that. So is there a tip on the organization that you want to share? Oh man, tips on organization. Well, I think it starts with awareness. You want to have a tool of awareness that helps you better understand what's the, you know, the reason, the, the trigger behind me not being organized in the first place. Mm. And the strengths can actually be a really insightful understanding of that. Because if, for example, you're pulled into different relationships, like me and my brother, we will prioritize the relationship above a task list. So our natural method of operation is to say, oh, well, this friend is doing this thing over here and I value the relationship. So I'm going to go and prioritize that. And my task list sits there waiting, doesn't get done, you know? Mm -hmm. So you want to understand where is that, you know, underlying root cause of why organization isn't happening. And these strengths are not an excuse to say, oh, I don't have execution strength, so I shouldn't be expected to hold the calendar or do tasks. You just want to understand how can you navigate life based on how you're wired and, you know, be able to do much better in life. And I, I personally was the person, the type of person that was like, oh, if somebody has a calendar and a to-do list, they have a stick so far up their rear end that they can't even enjoy life. And... <laughs> And I learned that, oh, actually having a calendar, having some clarity around, you know, the tasks I want to do helps me go further and achieve more. So it's worth a little bit of that organizational system to have that. Very good. Let me see if do we have any other questions here. I could talk for probably two hours about that last question. So if, Actually, if they're serious very, about very it, good. <laughs> yeah. if they're serious about it, I can share my systems and what I do, but there's just really no time to get me all excited right. about it right here. <laughs> Well, I think we're actually very close to time here, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you very much, Dion. Thank you for sharing you. your content information or your contact information. I appreciate that. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on this Ant Eater Wellness Wednesday. It's the alumni chapters that present this. These are chapter leaders and members that put on and share some of their expertise. And so we encourage folks to go ahead and join one of the chapters. We have 36 chapters worldwide. So there's gotta be one that you might resonate with you. And if there isn't, please let us know. Uh, go to the If there isn't, website. just come to ours. <laughs> <laughs> and which one would that be? <laughs> the Iranian American alumni chapter. It is a very fun you have chapter. Good food. <laughs> you do not have to be Iranian <laughs> to join the group, right? 
you just uh, have to right. enjoy the culture or want to learn about the culture. Um, I've had a great time with this chapter. They have a great Facebook page. You can follow what they're doing. And their next upcoming event is June 18th. I encourage you to register for that. They have two wonderful panelists uh, that will share uh, their exciting career experience. And then we have another Anteater Wellness Wednesday next Wednesday. So please register for that as well. Uh, thank you so much. Unless there's any other questions, I think I'm going to say good night and enjoy your week. Let me give it one more shot here at looking at our questions here. Oh, look, we get a lot of thank yous. I think there's I see one from Shadi. Uh, she said, other than the breathing exercise, what types of things do you employ to reduce stress? That's a good question, the Shadi. Yeah, it's a good one. So the, the big one is not allowing the stress to just bounce around in your head. I've found that what helps me a lot is writing things down and processing it because the fears that were freaking me out in my head, once I wrote them down, weren't, there isn't the same relationship with it. And you're able to process it a little differently to let go of it, to create a plan to overcome it. So being able to write it down somewhere, whether it's just on a piece of scrap paper or in a journal is irrelevant, but I definitely recommend that. And breathing, just come back to breathing because literally 30 seconds of that just signals to your body, hey, calm down, we're okay. There's no saber tooth tiger. <laughs> it's just the mind freaking itself out. And that can be very, calming in itself as a very effective way shockingly effective way <laughs> all right great job you're getting a lot of kudos good job Keon. that was very informative all right thank and you. thank you everyone for your participation uh we look forward to seeing you next week and um and hopefully in the future at one of our in-person events but until then We'll see you online. <laughs> Take care, zot, everybody. Zot, zot. Thanks Give for making it out. <laughs> <laughs> zot, zot. Thanks, Elsa. I appreciate you Thank and Wendy's you. support in putting Thank this you. together.